All right, so picking back up where we left off yesterday. Uh, so we repo synced, we uh, synchronized the repository, and now we have all of these projects synchronized. If we look in our folder, and we check out that drive that I had, and we look at AOSP 10, we see all of these files are now in here. If we look with control H we'll also see the hidden files and inside here we see this repo file and this has all of the um, projects as they get downloaded and that sort of thing. During the repo sync you actually won't see any files in here except for the hidden files because during the repo sync it's it's downloading them to that hidden file and then it populates them to the main uh, main non-hidden area once you've completed downloading them all and it does this checking out process. <clears throat> this is actually kind of important because it does allow you to choose different versions and you can change which version is checked out and you can actually roll back or go go back to something previous uh, and, and work through that. Or if you're using something older you can actually go to something ahead during that. And that's why the repo sync takes so much space. If we look at uh, disk free dash H and then we'll grep the drives, we see that we have used uh, 87 uh, gigs just for this download right here, which really isn't too bad. Um, of course, it had told us we need 250 gigs for downloading all this stuff and then 150 gigs for building. So our 400 gig drive is just a little overkill based on what we actually need. Uh, we're only using 24% of our 400 gig drive. So uh, just, a, just a little note there so you can see what you've got. Um, Space-wise, there's just always saying the maximum amount of space they can think of for you to have stuff. Now this will get bigger if you are um, downloading specific other things uh, such as you have specific devices and kernels that you're going to add to your repository. So we look at on that note the kernel and we see we actually have no kernels in here um, that are available. We look at our devices and we actually don't see a whole lot of devices in here. Um, we see a few of the uh, Google devices and that sort of thing in here. But uh, just just interesting that a lot of uh, a lot of things not populated that you would have populated if you were building more and more of your phones. So once we're in this and we haven't synchronized, let's start building something. So what we do to start, I guess I'll show in the instructions as well here. Um, we look at, are we finished our repo sync and talks about some mirrors and that sort of thing and get tags and none of that is terribly interesting to us. Uh, we then need to obtain proprietary binaries. So if we if we go to start building and we say uh, this dot, which means source, and build environment setup dot shell, this is the the shell script that's going to set up our build environment and make it ready for building. And then we say lunch because we want to choose what we're going to order what we want to have built and it's going through all the device trees and figuring out what's available some uh, ROMs will have a list that it can query to see what's available um, but all of them will look through the device trees to see if there's any add lunch combos that will allow you to build that particular variant. Um, you can also specify a variant specifically which we'll hopefully look at later but I wanted to show this in relation to these obtaining proprietary binaries once it catches up with me here. Going just a little slow today. Well, while I'll wait for that, because I wanted to show you, we can choose to build things without downloading the proprietary bin binaries or that sort of thing, but t 
typically for every phone or tablet or anything out there there's a lot of source code which we saw in here to build a lot of the portions of the devices and to build a lot of the portions of uh, Android of course is the Android open source project so that's of course all open source but the phone itself here's our list now the phone itself may need some proprietary binaries to actually function so for instance we see down in here a lot of the different uh, different phones that you can build and notice that they are um, all based on their name they all have a code name as they call it uh, and so knowing what everyone's code name can sometimes be a trick just so you know if you look up them by their code name like you could say code name coral phone and looks like pixel 4 and pixel 4 XL uh, code names coral and something else here so pixel 4 XL is code name coral so you can actually uh, you know look them up that way if you don't happen to know what the code name is or you can just uh, do it in reverse you can say what's the code name for pixel 4 or pixel 4 XL and you'll get this so for instance if we decide we want to build that coral and we choose uh, on our lunch option here number 14 right so 14 it is now going to set us up to build coral but what's missing from this and what it won't say is missing is the proprietary binaries so a lot of times when they're building a phone uh, there's very few phones out there that all of the source code to make the hardware on the phone is completely open source uh, in fact actually I'm not specifically aware of any that is 100 percent open source but if you find one let me know in the comments I, I'd be glad to uh, to take a look at that uh, there's a lot that are close but almost all of them have some proprietary binary so what will happen is the system on a chip maybe I'll use an example maybe to make the um, graphics driver work will have some special binary file that's pre-compiled that you have to add to your build after the fact so for instance in this case we would want to download those proprietary binaries now for Google devices you can actually do it right here I'll just middle click this to open it up and we see all of our um, images that you can get so we're doing coral which is the pixel XL pixel 4 XL coral right here and so if we want that vendor image and all of those then we would download these files so for instance I'll just click that it says what do we want to do with it let's go ahead and save it it's going to take that a while to complete we'll grab this one as well we're going to save those and it says here you know this page contains binary hardware support files for the Nexus and Pixel phones or other devices that are available for users of the Android open source project these files are for use only on your personal devices and may not be redistributed by you or used in any way except as specifically set forth in the license terms enclosed in each individual download so when we open this up there's going to be some information in there that uh, that we can see um, now you will notice that there's different versions of it so I downloaded 007 here's actually there's a newer one here of 11 so I probably should have done that one um, I'm just doing this to show you so we'll, we'll continue with that for now uh, most likely these last portions relate to which uh, Android 10.0.0 version you're building which we're building 14 so this would be the one that we would need not the one that I chose to download um, but since we're already in the process of downloading those we'll we'll work with what we've got 
I don't actually have a Pixel X, Pixel 4 XL, so we wouldn't be able to look at it anyways. But uh, but I want to show you the process of how this works. So while you're waiting for those to download, you can actually go ahead and build this, and then put those pieces in and and rebuild, and it'll only take a few minutes to add those pieces back in. Either which way, we'll take a look at what to do with those parts and pieces in a minute. So we have said, we've set up with our build environment setup dot shell, we've said lunch, we've picked our combo, which in this case we want a number 14, which was the coral. And notice that it puts out all this information, codename R, platform version R. Uh, product AOSP Coral, user debug is the variant, and then we have it's um, built for release ARM64 and all of the stuff that relates to that. It says what machine I'm building with, and then uh, what, uh, what you know, it's trying to build, um, which would be this generic ARM V8-A ARM64. So, and then a secondary of ARM. So it's all ready to build. So at this point, literally, to start the build, all we have to do is type make. So when we type make, it's going to start thinking about it. So what is it thinking about while it does this? Let's take a look. So if we go to our Google devices, so we're in our ASP10 tree, we went to device, and now we're going to go to the Google folder, and we're going to find the coral, which is right here. I'm kind of overtasking the computer a little bit here while it tries to do this and that at the same time. But so we open up the coral and we see this Android make file and this Android BP and this Android product file and then this AOSP coral.make. And there's lots of other files, but these four are really the ones that are driving what's starting here. So we look at this BP file. And this is some extra information for song which is the build tool that's right here. This is song, product, song, namespaces. And it has all this information, so it looked in these files. Uh, Android.make right here, it's saying, hey, if you're going to build the coral, include everything that's in this folder. But this Android product is where it's getting this whole AOSP coral. So if you say, I want to build AOSP coral, it looks through all the device trees looking at these Android products that make file to say, hey, is there one that says make AOSP coral? And it says, yeah, there is AOSP coral user debug right here, common lunch choice, which it added to our lunch combo. Uh, we used to call that add lunch combo, and now in, in Android 10, it's called common lunch choices. And it says, hey, yeah, I want to build AOSP Coral dash user debug. Is there an Android products make that talks about building this AOSP Coral? It says, yeah, AOSP Coral dot make does. Oh, okay. So we go to this AOSP Coral dot make, and what do we see in here? A lot of information about what to call and what to do, but it says, hey, product name, AOSP underscore Coral. So this knows, hey, if I want to build Coral, this is where I got to go. And then what happens is it says, okay, if I'm going to build that, I need to follow all of these instructions. And the instructions are call these products. Go to the product core 64 bitmake file. Go to the product mainline.make file and do whatever they say. Also, call device google coral device dash coral.make. So it's saying, okay, find device coral.make right here and run that as well. And then it also says if it exists go to vendor Google devices coral proprietary device dash vendor.make. That's that stuff we're downloading right now. Um, my internet's kind of slow so I didn't want to wait too long for it but we'll look at where we would put that in a minute. And we see also call if it exists Google devices coral pre-built device vendor coral if it's there. All right. So it goes to each one of these and starts doing stuff with this flags and things in mind. It also says, you know, copy some files, you're going to do some stuff. So that's what's happening right here. It's setting out to start this task, and so it's putting all this together. It's read through 156 um, 
different files here to try to get things sorted out and then it's going to make a list of build ninja files of everything that it's going to do and that list is probably going to be somewhere over 80,000 different tasks that it has to do <clears throat> so for instance one of those tasks is okay I need to go to coral device dash coral dot make so in device coral device dash coral dot make we'll see that it has more instructions go to in device google coral device dash common dot make so it's saying yeah do all of this stuff and then also go to device common dot make so then you go look at device common dot make and it's saying yeah do all of this stuff and also go to device google coral device dot make oh that's this one here and it's like yeah do all of this stuff right here as well and it also says to go get some other things that you need to get so you can see how this process slowly starts to get pretty big pretty fast so I'll close these windows out here alright so with that build in mind that I'm trying to have it build remember we don't have our vendor files in the right place we don't even have a vendor folder okay and so without that vendor file it's missing a few things that it's going to need for a successful functioning build when it's done it will build successfully but it won't function when it's done now there's different ways that these vendor files are added uh, some of them are added and can be put in during the build process so let's go look at that stuff that we downloaded so some of those things are put in during the build process and some of those things can be put in after the build process sometimes it will be literally an image that you flash to a certain partition which happens a lot with Sony uh, open device projects right so we're just right clicking I'm gonna open with the archive manager and I'm gonna extract it uh, to put it right in here for you you can do all this from the command line as well um, but we'll just go ahead and, and uh, do it here from the GUI pretty simple I'm kinda seriously overtaxing this computer right here alright so we see that it comes with this shell file so we're gonna extract it alright so this is getting a little bit slow let me stop this build process so we actually have some computing power to do something with oh well here we want to just extract it that's fine control C I'm just stopping right here got signal interrupt there it stops okay great we'll close this okay and then we'll extract this one as well which actually we can just say extract here that's pretty handy so these vendor files that we need you can either put in um, during the build process or sometimes it's like an image file okay and what we see is it has this extract google devices coral dot shell right and this one has an extract qcom coral dot shell so these are extract files and so the method that this particular one works is it is based off of either the listing of the shell file itself will say or it'll be based off of a proprietary files text file that allows you to extract the vendor binary large objects or vendor blobs from the phone that you actually have so that's one way to do it you would actually physically plug in your phone with a USB cord start an ADB connection by running these 
running one of these uh, shell scripts to pull all of the vendor files you need off of your working phone. So that's one method. Uh, with the Sony Open Devices project, what they will do is they will actually give you a uh, OEM image that you flash to the OEM partition. Okay, so sometimes that's one way that it's done. Uh, very common, though, is we'll wait for it. Uh, very common. Hmm, for some reason, it's stuck. All right, we'll close them here. Force quit. Interesting that it doesn't want to open. All right, we'll open it in terminal just to look at it. Cat extract. Ah, because it is not a normal shell file. Interesting. So they've actually put together essentially like a, a binary to extract their stuff so you can't read what it says and that's why it wouldn't open. But a lot of times you'll see uh, a normal extract um, shell that is inside of your device tree. Um, and we'll go to Google here, Coral. What would just be an extract shell that's in here? that you can run and it literally is just a text based file that you can look at. We'll look at one here in just a minute. Let me go ahead and start this back again. I'm going to start with a J-2 to say only use two threads so I don't bog the computer down too much so we can poke around and look at a few things while we wait. But these, uh, these binaries you need them to have a successful build. So let's take a look at GitHub Lineage OS. So here we go, Android device Sony Discovery. I happen to have a Sony Discovery, so that is a pretty easy one to take a look at. So it has a set up make files and a um, proprietary files and extract files shells. So what happens is if you run the setup make file dot shell which we'll take a look at this creates some folders in the vendor partition or vendor file excuse me a vendor folder in your Android source code and then it creates a device folder and it starts inputting making these files, set up make files dot shell. Then you run the extract files dot shell and it is going to hook up to your uh, phone and start pulling the files that are listed in this proprietary files dot text file. So it's like hey for the camera actuators you need vendor firmware BU24228 GWL underscore FW1 dot bin. So you need this binary to be able to run your camera actuator. So it goes onto the phone through an ADB connection and it steals that file out of there, copies it over, and puts it into that folder that we created in the by running the setup makefile.shell script. So that's one method of doing it. Uh, is using those extract files. I wanted to show you one that you could actually see the files. The Google ones, they've essentially made it a binary file attached to a shell script so that way it runs that binary and downloads those for you. Uh, another place that you can do that is if you don't want to go through the work of doing it yourself. We could probably debate the legality of it, but if we look on GitHub at the uh, Muppets, we will see that they have done a lot of this work for us where they hooked up and they ran the shell script and then the copied data they take and put in a folder that you can just download. So for instance proprietary vendor Google we can look at that right here which is what we need and it says okay if you are building Lineage 17 you need this set of um, different uh, 
proprietary files. Okay, and notice the coral is not in here, so that would not be one that you could use this for. You'd have to use the extract shell script or look for somebody else that already made those coral uh, files and downloaded those for you. Um, so you need those vendor, those vendor objects, so that way you can have a successful running build when you're done. Um, the build itself will complete without them, but it will not function unless you have them available. So let's go back to our instructions. So yes, you need to extract those proprietary files, and then the binaries and their matching make files will be installed in the vendor hierarchy from the source tree, and then you can start uh, start doing your build. So then you go on to the build instructions here, which is what we're doing. Give some background about the different formats and file types and everything. Um, we don't really need any of those. You can read through that on your own if you'd like. Lots of really good information that could be very helpful for you. Oh, there it was. Build and then building. So building Android, uh, you can source build environment setup shell or dot build environment setup shell. That's what we're doing. It's the same thing. Dot means source, and that script is going to start doing things. So you can launch and select the product you want to build, or you can do these M M M A M M M A C root and that sort of thing. Uh, HMM will tell you the list of available commands, which is kind of handy. And for their example, they just launch AOSP ARM dash eng, uh, and this would be one for the um, emulator that you could run, which actually that might be a good one for us to build as well. Um, I do want to see this process get started so you can watch what happens here. And of course, it talks about the different build types. We have user, user debug, and eng. Um, and pretty much the eng is what I recommend if you're building something for the very first time, because uh, that will be good to uh, get that with the proper development configuration, additional debugging tools, the ability to hook up with ADB, hopefully without having to accept from uh, accept the computer from the phone and that sort of thing. Really handy when you're doing something for the first time. Uh, user debug is pretty much uh, it allows root access for debugging and then user is just the normal build that you would want to release for everyone to use for production. So that's the step that we're at right now where this is going to um, hopefully start building soon. This virtual machine is not very happy with me at the moment. So I'll just pause the video here for a second. Hopefully it'll pick up building in a moment here. Okay, it seems to have picked back up. It just took it a few minutes to work itself out. Um, not really sure what the problem was there, but just overtasking this uh, virtual machine and probably because I was doing stuff in the background on the uh, host machine as well. So here it goes. It starts getting the uh, global variables. It's going through and it's finding, you can see it's going through every folder like external. So it's going through the external folder right now and then next it'll go through the framework and so on and so forth. And it's going through and it's reading, uh, for instance, it'll go to this uh, bsdiff folder. It'll read this android.bp and all of the make files in every folder to make sure it understands what it's supposed to do when it's time to build. So it's going through and it's gathering all that information. And you can see since I said J2, there's two threads. And so it's doing this one and this one. And it's doing them both simultaneously. The more J that you give it, the more work that it's going to do at any given time. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. Obviously the higher the J number the more threads will be running at one time which means the more CPUs you need to have to do that work and the more RAM that you need to have to sustain that work. So if you're building with a machine that's a little bit lower on the uh, you know on the hardware specs lowering your J number the number of threads that you're running at one time can you know seriously help your build because even though you're not building as much at once you can actually focus all the RAM that you do have on building what you are building. So this is just a virtual machine that I use uh, primarily for doing videos and things like this or if I'm doing some uh, Android building while on the go that sort of thing. So not a lot of uh, power behind this particular machine. My main machine that I use for building uh, Android is, is a much greater machine to work with. So as you can see it's not that the entire build is 85 percent but that this globally going through all of the uh, different things to check what I'm supposed to do for the build that is nearing 90 percent now. So in a moment it'll complete doing all of these and it will uh, then put together essentially like a build file to say okay now that I've looked at everything that's in there and I know what's going to be built I can now say this is what I'm going to do and it puts that together fairly quickly and then it starts doing the build and the build we're gonna see like I said it's probably gonna be upwards of 80,000 tasks that it has to do to complete making this build. So yeah, so it reached 99%, it's done looking at that, and now it is setting up the build ninja that is going to uh, organize all the tasks to get done. Now notice, even though I have a J2, it's only doing one task at the moment, and that is because sometimes you reach bottlenecks in your process, no matter how great your machine is, having multiple threads is helpful because it will make it build faster but eventually you do get bottlenecked at a couple points where it just has to do one particular thing before it can continue um, so this is new in Android 10 this uh, the way the status is displayed here uh, of course if you're familiar with building things like lollipop marshmallow and nugget you would see this would just be a continuous scrolling line and all of this would disappear keep going up as new things were just written line after line after line at the bottom and then we saw in uh, Oreo and Pi they came out with where it would just write one line as percentage change but then when there was any information then it would bump it up and move up but it only showed one line at the time and then this new build it allows for each J that you have set that it has a different thread uh, percentage and time of that thread running right now and then you can see the process right here it's now red because it believes that it's taking longer than it should to do this task they've set up for every task about how long it should take don't be too concerned about whether it's red or yellow or white uh, because that literally is just the time frame that they set for using their particular computers that they have so now we just have to wait until that gets started I'm not sure how long this will take before that gets started so I'll go ahead and pause the video here and then we can jump back into it uh, when it starts building okay and now we see the uh, build process has started and uh, if we scroll back up a little bit we can see okay that it finished making those build rules that we talked about and now it knows what it's supposed to do and of course I'm only running a J2 so it's doing two threads it's 18 percent of 109,613 tasks that need to be completed and it's doing two of those at a time right now it's doing external protobuf app rotoc clang C++ on this uh, source Google protobuf compiler Java so it's doing these two threads right now trying to complete this work and it has to complete those 109,613 tasks and you can see the timer here for each task and then it resets to zero once that task is done most of the tasks taking anywhere from uh, you know three to ten seconds to complete it'll depend some of the tasks will take longer and some won't take nearly as long at all so uh, this is just going to complete building and uh, hopefully later we can take a look at what that looks like 
Um, until next time, I appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully it was informative and uh, that uh, you uh, gleaned a good uh, understanding of building Android 10 from it.